Well, good morning, everybody. Um, it's Friday the 20th of November, and uh, at 1,800 hours today, the latest Scottish Government uh, travel restrictions come into force um, for COVID, um, which basically uh, mean that if you live in a level, particularly in a level three or a level four area, then you shouldn't be traveling outside of your local authority area uh, to access sport and recreation. Um, and really, if you're in level one or level two, you probably shouldn't be going outside your areas anyway if we're going to try and get on top of the pandemic. So for a lot of course anglers, particularly those who live in areas where there's not a great deal of access to course fishing, this can possibly mean that you can't get to a course fishery. Or if you can, it might be too busy and you might not be able to get a peg. So what I'm going to do today is I'm heading down to Kakodi Beach, which is about 20 minutes from my house in Fife. And we're going to have a look at uh, using coarse fishing tackle to fish for um, sea fish, uh, sea species. And what we're going to mainly going to do today, it's a nice sandy beach, so it's clean, what's called clean ground, using a sea angling technical term. Um, and we're going to try and see if we can uh, tempt a few flatfish. So what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to use a, a medium feeder rod, which I think most people will have in their armoury. Um, but you could equally use a pike rod, a carp rod, and we'll cover tackle you need, tackle you'll have, bits and pieces you might need to buy, how to set it up um, to simply fish for flatfish on a clean beach. Um, so without further ado, let's get on the road. So we're now down, down on Kakodi Beach. Um, the tide's actually going out. I normally prefer to fish with the tide coming in. Um, when I'm fishing for flatfish, only because if I don't know the beach, I, I can actually see where the gullies um, and little features are on the beach where the flatfish are likely to hold up as they move back in with the tide. So first thing we're going to do is look at the tackle that we're going to use today. What I've brought with me today is a, is a Priam Rush, a Colmic uh, Priam Rush feeder rod. It's one of the new competition range. Um, it's literally got an ounce and a half tip in the top because I'm conscious that a lot of people might not have um, a heavy rod. But if you've got a pike rod or a carp rod, that's perfectly suitable for uh, this sort of job. So what we're gonna do now is we'll put this together and then what I'm gonna do is go through setting the rig up with you. Okay, so um, the reel today is loaded with uh, braid. It's the reel I've used at uh, Lock Ken recently. So it's got a uh, 09 millimeter braid, which is about 15 pound braid. And then I've got a, an 025 uh, shock leader on it. Um, I'm just gonna use this exactly as it's set up, as if I was gonna go feeder fishing from uh, Lock Ken. So the bits and pieces we're gonna need today to do this is I'm gonna need some some basic stops and I'll, I'll get these all out on the box and then show you them a bit closer in a second. So what we're going to need is some stops to go on the line. We're going to need a couple of swivels. We use normal swivels. We're going to need a couple of beads, some beads. I'll get the beads out when we use them because that will be easier. Um, but basically you just want some rig beads and, uh, and a lead clip for the bottom of the, the line for tying the, to attaching the lead onto. Okay, so. <clears throat> As I say, the beads will get out in a second. So basically, this is what we're going to use to set it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on a, a rubber stop onto the line, followed by a bead, followed by a swivel, another bead, another rubber stop, and we're going to push those up the line. Then we're going to do the same again and then attach a lead clip to the bottom of it. Okay, so I'm going to do that, put my glasses on because I can't see anything without my glasses on these days and I'll make that rig up here so you can see <clears throat> how I'm doing it. Um, I'll do it um, a bit of a close up of it in the garage later today <clears throat> so that you can actually see it a bit clearer 
um, when we're actually doing it in, in the garage where the lighting's a little bit better, because I'm, I'm conscious this might be a little bit difficult to see. So first of all, we're just gonna put on a, a rubber stop. If we can get the thing through that, okay. There's a rubber stop on the line, there. We're then going to get a little bead. Now you can buy little helicopter beads from, um, from tackle shops, these little black ones. They're quite good because they're thin at one end and thick at the other end, so it actually helps the, the swivel hold on. So we've got stop, bead, swivel, bead, fat end first this time, and then another stop. And we can open that one up. Always the way with these uh, these multi stops. Once you've put one on, they don't tend to want to go on again. Let's just use that one from there. Deary dear, I need to get my eyes tested. Okay, so if you have a look there, <coughs> we've got a stop, a bead, a swivel, a bead, a stop. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do on that is I'm actually going to put another stop but a stick stop underneath that because it will help, it will stop it, um, two stops together, help it um, stop moving and fly, uh, risk of it coming back down the line if you get, uh, if you catch a fish, okay? So there you go, stick stop underneath it. All right, so that's the first bit. We'll push that up out the way and I'll talk about distancings and spacing in a minute. But all I'm now going to do is do exactly the same again so, see if we can open this up. Put the line through. Fingers and thumbs this morning. So there we go. Another stop. Okay. Now I'm not really fussed about a stick stop under this, and I'll explain why in a minute. But basically, bead, swivel. Another one of those beads, thank you very much. Now want to come out when you want them to come out. Okay. Another stop. Okay. Right, so now you've got two lots on, this one's got a stick stop underneath it. So all we're then going to do is we're going to take our lead clip and we're going to tie that onto the bottom using a normal half blood knot or green or not. So four or five times round, back through it and take it round three or four times again. Okay. So that's not going to come off. Okay, so there's your, there's your thing. Okay, so that's where your lead's going to go. Now what we're going to do is going to push these down almost on top of the lead. And then what I want is I want about 30 centimetres above that for my top snood. Okay, 30 to 40 centimetres, like that. Right, so that's that done. We'll attach a lead to that, pop these away, otherwise we'll lose them all over the beach. And then we'll talk about some other rigs a bit later on <coughs> when we're back in the garage. So now hook lengths, or snoods as they like to call them uh, when they're sea fishing. I'm going to use darker lines so you can see what I'm doing today. But basically, <coughs> this is former 025. It's very good um, sinking line. It will hold nice and tight to the bottom, which is what I want it to do <coughs> when I'm fishing for flatfish. Blackfish also like a bit of bling. So we are also going to put on um, some beads and the hooks I'm going to be using are MR67s in a size six, okay? It's a size six hooks. There's a Colmic MR67, but any sort of 
roundish bended C hook, smaller pattern, um, is uh, good for flatfish. Right, so beads wise. The first thing I'm going to do, again with this, uh, when I'm setting this up, is I want to put a stop on the hook length to stop the bait and the beads flying up the line and potentially causing tangles. So we're going to get one of the small stick stops again. We'll pop that on. As I say, it's still attached to the smaller line at this stage. Um, I find it's a lot easier to do it this way. So we put a stick stop on, move that out the way. Okay, and then what I want is a couple of beads. Now, because I'm using light line, what I want to do here today is I want to um, keep the bait pinned to the bottom. So the, the, the <coughs> beads I'm going to use are little med metal red and yellow beads. Okay, so I'm going to use an orange one <coughs> and a yellow one. Okay, like that. Little orange lead head. They're actually lead heads for fly fishing. All right, so the first one I'm going to put on is the orange one. I'm going to pop that on to the line and slide that up, and that will go up against the stick stop. And then I'm going to put the other one on, and you want the big holes in the beads, the wide holes that go towards the fly hook end together, okay, to, to um, touching each other, so they don't go over the knots or the beads. So that's on there. We're then going to take a hook, okay. Now I quite often put a rubber bead um, when I'm using these, I'll tend to put a little rubber bead, which I'm going to get out of here if I can get it. Um, let's get a hook out. There's a hook. We need two, so we'll keep two out. And we'll have a little rubber bead, which are being really disobedient and don't want to come out, to act as a cushion for the thing. So you've got the two, the red and the orange bead, stick stop, orange bead, yellow bead, little soft rubber bead and then we're going to tie the hook on and the way I normally tie the hooks on is normally when you're tying a, a hook you could just tie a normal blood knot half blood knot on to tie your hook on like you're a grinner knot like you normally would but I find that the beads then sit away from the hook so what I tend to do is do it the way you would do a, a, a knotless knot almost so you're going to go up through the bottom of the hook okay through the bottom of the hook <coughs> Pull the line up along, along the shank of the hook like that. Okay, hope you can see that. Okay, you then form a loop back on yourself and we're just gonna go round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times. I'm gonna pull that up to the back and pinch it in your fingers bit of spit on the knot so that it doesn't overheat. I'm going to grip this bit and then we're going to take that tag end and push it through the loop at the back. Okay and then we're just simply going to pull it tight on itself and then pull that knot up to the to the part uh, up against the hook. Okay we need my little snippers now <clears throat> and then you just snip off the the end and that knot is tight up against the hook. The good thing is from that is one, the beads then go up against the eye of the hook and not against the knot so they don't rub it. You can pull that stick stop down, okay, like so. Okay, those beads will stop the bait blowing up the line, but also just like a thick, the line is now coming from the underside of the hook. So if a bigger fish picks it up, not a flat fish, and tries to reject it, there's more chance of it hooking up. So, <clears throat> why did I leave that on the, um, <clears throat> on the smaller line when I tied it up? Well, basically, what I want to do is I want to take my snood here, and I want the hook length to be just above this one here because otherwise it'll tangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about an inch or two above that, and I'm going to measure up to the swivel above, and I'm going to pinch the line level with the swivel above. Oh, dropped it. Okay, let's just do that without the spool in my hand. It might be easier. <coughs> so I'm going to pinch it there, 
Okay, so that's the length of hook length that I want. So I'm going to form a small loop like that, and I'm just going to tie a simple overhand loop knot. You need to make sure that that loop is big enough for the beads and the hook to go past back through, and I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, at this stage, still attached to the spool of the line, but now we have the hook length, the length we want, with a loop at the top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to twizzle the line. The wet fingers be easier. <clears throat> and the reason I'm twizzling the line is that we're using quite light hook lengths with O25, and it can twist and cause tangles. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to twist one one way and one the other way to create a spun up boom about four inches long. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. That's all twizzled line. And at the bottom of it, I'm simply going to tie another simple overhand loop to lock it in place. Okay, so now you've got a loop, a twizzled boom of line, and then normal line down to the beads and the hook. So we'll snip that off. The spool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that to my top um, swivel. So all we're going to do is we're going to get that loop, squash it down and pass it through the eye of the, the swivel. This is easier if you have a weight on the end, which I should have done first. And all we're going to do is pass the hook and the beads through that loop, as I say, Hopefully, uh, it's a little bit snaggy, but it will go through like that. And that's my first snood. And as you can see, it's sitting just above where the next hook length will go. Okay. So all I'm now going to do, <coughs> I won't do it on camera. I'm going to do exactly the same again to tie another hook length onto this bottom swivel. So basically what I've now got, and then what I'll have is I'll have one hook length that's below the weight on the bottom, hard on the bottom and another one that if you think about the angle that that will be coming up to the rod tip which will be just touching and bouncing along the bottom causing a bit of movement and hopefully attracting some fish okay and my lead will be on there so I'll get this finished off and then I'll show you the finished product well it looks like uh, Dave's uh, hooked something so we'll see what he's got and then we'll quickly go through unhooking um, unhooking fish uh, the proper way if they're deep hooked. I don't know if this is deep hooked or not, but uh, flat, flatfish quite often take the bait down quite a long way and it uh, can sometimes need to be careful about how you unhook them. So, what have you got there, Dave? Uh, Flounder. Flounder. Right, excellent. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, with a flatfish here, it's, it's swallowed the bait. Yeah, um, I can see that. So what we have to do is we have to invert the hook, basically. Um, okay. So the way of doing that um, is good in through the gills. So using a standard slamatore disgorger like yeah. we'd use for course fishing. Yeah. So, oh. What I'll do first, I'll just check and make sure what side the hook's sitting on uh, and what it's close to. So the first thing I do is I get my disgorger yep. and I'll go in, in through the gills, out through the mouth and hook into the, to the line itself like this. Okay, so basically he's pushed that all the way through, out through its mouth and he's just going to put the snood line or the hook length line through the thing and pulled it back through. Yep. So now I've got that, I get, it, get a hold of my thumb uh, and I find out where the tension, or keep the tension on uh, and just find out where the hook is and I can see the hook is about there. So all I do now is just push it back. Out. 
So basically now we've got the hook and the line. Yep. Get my disgorger again. I just gently go through the mouth, run it down the side of the cheek, like that, so it's, it's, it comes out. I get my hook now and I invert it so it comes out that way. Yep. Yep. I get the hook and I stick it in at the slot on the disgorger like this. And then keeping hold of the line here, I gently pull it through, and that is how we saw it out, sort of flatties it tend to engulf, engulf the bait. There you go, absolutely perfect demonstration Dave, thanks very much. No problem. As I said before, um, flatfish do have a tendency because you don't often see the bites, sometimes they'll lie on the bottom and just engulf the bait and they can take it down quite deeply if you're not careful. Um, so that's the way to unhook them safely so that you can return them uh, alive to the water and we don't get loads and loads of dead flatfish. Thanks very much mate. Okay, no problem. Cheers. We just had a nice knock on that, so um, I'm going to give it a little, little look, see what we've got, if anything. Well, not quite the size of Dave's, but um, it's a start. Well, the rain's finally gone off um, and uh, it's been drizzly for most of the time. It's just, tide's just turning now, so hopefully we'll get one or two more fish. We've had um, three flounders in a small place. Um, best uh, distance is just a, a gentle lob, just beyond where the waves are breaking. So probably only about 20 meters or so. <clears throat> it's only about two or three foot deep there. But as I mentioned before, is as the waves roll in, as the, the waves build and crest, it draws sand up from the bottom, turns over the, um, the silt and causes uh, the fish to run in and, and look for feed being disturbed by the waves. So um, we'll keep giving it a, a plug. We're not going to stay much longer, but we'll give it an hour or so, I think, um, and see how we get on. But at the moment, as I say, Dave's had uh, three flounders, uh, decent ones. I've had all small ones, though. Um, so I've had uh, two flounders in a place myself. And Dave's had uh, three flounders, so it's, uh, we'll see how we go. Well, sadly, they're not getting any bigger, but we have an absolutely microscopic see-through um, dab with a really weird spot pattern on it. But there you go. It's another one. Yeah, two. Better fish, maybe. Oh, oh, we've got a double. Two nice flatties. There you go, double header, two nice flounders. Proper good ones. He's cheating clearly because I'm not catching them that big. <laughs> right, let's go back to my, see if I get anything on my rod. I just had one small one, but again, small one again. <clears throat> not casting any different to where he's casting and I'm not um, using any different bait. Although I think he's sneaking on a bit of ragworm to be honest with you. Um, I'm still on lug and uh, bits of fish. But um, no, it's not bad, and the day looks like it's brightening up a little bit. Uh, tide's starting to flood in, um, and things seem to be picking up a little bit. So uh, hopefully we'll get one or two more fish uh, very shortly. A couple of more small flounders, but uh, no decent ones, unfortunately. We had another rainstorm, which... Uh, Put paid to filming anything. 
tide's coming in quite quickly now. Um, we went through a period where both Dave and I got a fish almost every cast, but Dave was fishing across towards the harbour wall there and seemed to get decent ones, all 30 centimetre ones, whereas across where we are here, just you know, literally 10 metres away, got a lot of smaller ones. So, um, getting the odd knot. It's taking time for the fish to actually get the bait in their mouths. Now the interesting thing today was normally it's red and yellow beads, which is what I'm using on, on, the, on the snoods today, but Dave's caught most of his fish using green and black beads, which is unusual. It doesn't normally work here, but I don't know whether that's just a thing or um, whether his longer snoods were better than the short ones I'm fishing, just to get in a bit more movement. There's not a lot of uh, movement in the water today because, uh, as you can see, it's absolutely flat calm. Uh, and sometimes you need a bit of a wave or a bit of movement to actually get the fish to actually pick up on the, on the baits and take them. <clears throat> and I think perhaps his longer snoods um, <clears throat> these larger beads was getting a bit more movement, covering a bit more ground maybe. I'm going to give it one more cast after this one probably and then uh, call it a day I think. Might come back here again and give it another go, another day. A bit. But let's move everything back a bit and then we'll reel that in. Let's move the, move the camera back. Okie dokie, off we go. There we are, Look at that lovely picture. Move this back. I'll reel that in and then we'll uh, rebate and cast slightly over to the left a little bit. Let's see. Uh, Oh, oh, well, that's good. That's all right. Would appear that we might even have one. And we end the day the way we've gone through most of the day, to be honest with you, with another small flounder. <laughs>